Hello everybody, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Today the purpose of this video is to show you guys about the top 10 things that are very resourceful in Content Manager and CSP that you may not know about. So the first thing that we'll start off with is one that people don't usually know about and that is going to be the Real Mirrors extension under Smart Mirror in Custom Shaders Patch. This will basically make your mirrors one-to-one -one with the game and allow you to adjust them and get better quality out of your mirrors. You can see here you can change the update rate, you can change what is available in the reflections, but the big thing about this is I would only use this setting if you are unhappy with the mirrors on that one specific car. I would activate this, I would go adjust your mirrors, save it, and activate this when you're using the car that the mirrors are bothering you with. It may not seem like that's a bad setting to have on, but it absolutely does tank performance. The next one we'll move on to is grass effects. What it says here is it adds procedurally generated grass. And for those of you that don't know what it means by procedurally is basically randomly generated. The grass will be selected off of a pool of a whole bunch of grass textures and the game will continuously load in different grass as you are playing. If you want, you can save a lot of performance on different maps. It really depends on how much grass is on the maps just by turning this off. Another one that we're going to go over here is the skid marks effects. Now some people have this cranked up so they can see everybody's skid marks everywhere around the map. If you do that, those skid marks are always going to be rendered in the game and it will give you in turn worse performance, especially you will notice it if you're in pits and everybody in pits is doing burnouts and you have this maxed out, you will notice that. So personally, I run it at 50k. Another setting I'll mention here, which is not a setting that will affect your FPS rather than a setting that causes graphical glitches, is shadowed wheels. Go ahead and take that off for any modded maps and probably even the normal Kunos maps. The issue that happens with this setting is that your screen will flicker black and white on the roads and stuff like that. Um, especially noticeable the more cars there are and the more traffic that you're playing with. So another big setting here to get your FPS to be smooth is to allow this setting adjust improve smoothness and disable these two settings. Once you've done that, and you know your average frames per second posted in the AC video section here, you can now lock your frame rate by clicking this and locking it just below your average FPS. That will optimize your game to run smoothly because you're not calculating absolutely everything in direct real time using everything on your GPU this will give you a bunch of free extra rendering space basically and make the game not over render and it will run totally smooth you won't get any screen tearing if you're getting more FPS this is a fake sync if you will and it usually will hold 10 FPS higher than what you set it at which gives you room for those FPS drops this will make FPS drops less noticeable Another big setting for FPS is the high quality mirror resolution. I highly recommend that you run this setting as low as you like that you can stand and uncheck high quality. Another really big setting for modded maps with lots of street lights and traffic is the glare quality. If you have this at maximum compared to off, you will notice a huge difference online, even though the performance tab here will tell you it doesn't affect very much. That's wrong if you're playing on modded maps where there is lots of glare and lots of lights. It literally gets way worse than what it says there. So you definitely want to have this lowered when you're playing 
unmodded servers with traffic and all that stuff. Now, another thing for modded online is the world details. There's no point in doing a maximum world detail in online modded servers for modded maps that aren't insane on detail anyway. If you run minimum compared to maximum, you'll get better performance and you probably won't notice much of a difference on the actual modded maps themselves. Shadow resolution and all this other stuff is all the basic knowledge in all the other videos that you can quickly just go look at and figure out what you need to do. So in system, this is a really important thing because in system you can control the rendering distance of your mirrors. The higher your rendering distance on the mirrors, the worse performance that you will get. I promise you that. And also in your mirrors, if your mirrors are showing the cars way too small, way too far back, change your mirror field of view. This is going to optimize your game for yourself. It's not really going to make the performance better with the field of view, but it's going to make your game better for yourself. And while we are in here, if you want to remove all the annoying red dots popping up all over your screen showing you where people are as you pass them, uncheck this proximity indicator found here. If you're looking for any of the apps, they are now in Python apps set in the section here, and Python app settings are in here, which also have some other stuff there. So back to custom shaders patch here. What I'd like to go over as well now is some things in extra effects. Okay, so ambient occlusion here is in the game with SOL already, even if you have it disabled here. If you are using SOL and you go in game and you mess up with the ambient occlusion slider, it will make changes. You don't need to enable it here and you can save yourself that performance. It is known that the light bounce estimation for cars sometimes causes car paint to reflect off of the ground. And if you want to have your nice flames and everything off of the ground, you want to make sure to have glowing emissives checked. Another thing here that is really affecting performance is local reflections, otherwise known as screen space local reflections. Now what this does is render dynamic reflections on your screen space. It's very straightforward. And what this will do is this will give you what I like to call fake ray reflections. They will look awesome. You can experiment in here what you like. However, this alone will tank your performance a bit. And so will having motion blur on. That's total personal preference. But more importantly, extra effects as a whole is not budget PC friendly. If you are running a budget PC, I recommend extra effects because it literally adds a secondary rendering pass for the game, which means that you're basically rendering a bunch of stuff in the game twice to allow you to get better visual fidelity at the cost of performance, big time. So that's that. Another thing that we need to make sure we have off, I don't care what kind of PC you have, this is something that affects the performance so, so badly, you might as well just never have it on unless you're in single player doing hot laps or racing with some Kunos cars on a base track for the game. Dynamic shadows should be off. If you got to have it on, uncheck full resolution. Do yourself a favor and get used to no dynamic shadows. It's a terrible thing to have on. Now, if you want, we can take a look at reflections effects here. If you're using one, two, three, or four faces per frame and you're getting really good performance, you can enable shot cube map around focused car rather than camera. And what that is going to do is if you're driving your car in third person view and you see your bumper, the reflection is going to be rendered as if it was looking off of the bumper. So the, the reflection of the road is going to match up perfectly where it should be on the car rather than what would look like the reflection being rendered from your point of view 
looking at the ground and then seeing it on the car. It doesn't quite go one-to-one -one when you have this option off. However, you can see it says not recommended here. Obviously, you shouldn't throw that on unless you're already getting really good performance and you're not worried about anything else. I'm going to run with that on because I like to have that on. I'm not worried about it. <clears throat> now, the other couple things here that are just really small things I want to go over that can actually just kind of improve the smoothness of your game. I recommend if you want a smoother game to take off things like brake disc effects, grass effects, dynamic shadow should be off, turn off some of this particle effect stuff like fireworks and sparks and solid pieces of dirt around, come into skid marks, turn your skid marks down, make sure you don't have real mirrors on, go into track adjustments, make sure your seasonal adjustments are off, go into weather effects and make sure that your seasonal adjustments again are off and everything like that. If you have a new system, this might save you some FPS on the sky shader. Um, it's really up to you to just try that out and figure it out. And the last thing that we're going to do here is if you have a newer graphics card that can support this technology, you're going to enable the new DXGI flip model and you're going to increase the maximum latency of the frames, which is basically going to give you a pre-rendered frame. So you can have smoother better FPS and gameplay. The only problem is if you increase this too much you will now have input lag. And if you've ever played on a 60 hertz console like an Xbox 360 and played on a 120 hertz TV and you felt that when you move the stick it, it's like it takes twice as long to react on the screen, that's the input lag that you will have if you put this too high. The other good example is if you have a 60 hertz monitor with like a 3060 graphics card and you play with V-Sync on, it'll be smooth, but you have input lag. Triple buffering is good if you can get it to the point where it smooths out your frames, but does not cause input lag. So again, a quick way to get your game to function as smooth as possible is to adjust the frame time to improve smoothness in general patch settings under FPS limiter options. The next thing you want to do is play with whatever settings you play at, find your average FPS, and limit your frame rate just under your average FPS. And then you want to come into DXGI flip model <clears throat> and activate that Use triple buffering and put triple buffering up until you notice input lag. And when you notice the input lag, go back on, on this setting. Also, remove the dirt completely with your windscreen effects. That'll help you out a lot. And if you do have issues with your driver arms or steering wheel locked or anything like that, you can find that in a set of course of view and UI. So the video today was more so about a couple quick tips, a couple settings you might not know about, and how to change some things to make your game a little better for you. This is less about how to get better FPS, okay? There's a couple things in here on how to get some better FPS. The majority of this is how to make your game look good and not be messed up. Have a good day, everybody. Take care. I hope this video helped you out.